Hey guys, welcome. This is going to be our uh, lecture for Monday, March 23rd. And this is going to start off our discussion on the Great Depression. All right, so as we're going along, uh, feel free to have this video on. Uh, whether you're just listening to it, watching it, uh, it works in conjunction with your PowerPoint. So you can be going along, taking notes. Uh, if you feel like you're falling behind on the notes and you want to pause the video, go ahead and pause the video. Uh, not a problem. But we're going to start with our Monday, March 23rd PowerPoint. And just like I said, feel free to follow along. Okay. So the can't miss stock. <clears throat> Many people believed at the beginning of the 1920s that the stock market uh, would inevitably go up and up and up and up and up. Similar to say 2008 where we had the housing market collapse. People believed that the value of their homes would continuously go up. Uh, but as the old adage goes, what goes up must inevitably come back down. The stock market was no different in the 1920s. However, when it did come back down, it came back down with uh, quite a crash, right? Which would then lead to the Great Depression. A uh, very famous individual in the 1920s was someone named Groucho Marx. Uh, Groucho Marx and his brother woke up one morning and had heard about a stock that was uh, really in a frenzy. It was, it was rising at a rate uh, that really most investors felt if you could invest now, you were going to make a lot of money. And this is actually what he said to uh, uh, to one of his brothers. He, he told him, you know, if we don't get that down there now, uh, the stock may jump another 10 points, right? I mean, that's how rapidly it was going up. Uh, for many of us who are paying attention to the news today, uh, we can see that unfortunately our stock market is going very rapidly in the other direction. However, uh, this time Groucho was talking about uh, what would become known as a bull market or a market on the rise. So moving on to the next slide, business booms. The Mars Brothers were not alone and their enthusiasm. Like I said, most Americans at this time felt that uh, in the 1920s, if you were able to invest, regardless of what it was in, if you were able to invest, that it was something worthwhile. As people continued to put money in the stock market, prices and shares kept rising. Okay. Now, again, as the value of the stock goes up, uh, the more valuable your investment becomes. Now, people didn't realize that the stock market would eventually not only go into correction where it works back towards the median, but that it would actually collapse. And, and that's really what we're going to be talking about this week. We're going to talk about the factors that led to the stock market collapse. Right? A lot of people think that uh, the stock market collapsing is what caused the Great Depression. That, that's certainly a cause. It's certainly a cause. You can't deny that. But it wasn't the only factor, right? The stock market collapsing was very problematic. But the government's response, specifically President Herbert Hoover's response, uh, was less than adequate. And it made a very bad situation much, much worse. Okay, so moving on to the next slide, uh, you should be on slide four of six at this point. Okay, and this slide is titled Black Tuesday. Now, Groucho's world, like that of every American, was about to change, and, and change it did. Stock prices plunged on October 29th, 1929. This day is forever remembered as Black Tuesday. Many people immediately wanted to sell their shares, but very few people were willing to buy. All right. We, we talked about supply and demand. If, if you have a product that people want, that product will sell very easily. That, that won't be uh, a, a problem at all. But when you have a product that people do not want or people think is going to lose significant value, they're going to be very hesitant. So it, when you're seeing this massive sell-off, where a lot of people today would say, oh, you know, maybe this is a really good time to invest. 
right? The stock's down a little bit. I feel like it's going to bounce back. This is a good time to jump in the market. At this time, that was not the thought. And in fact, when the stock market begins to collapse, uh, these bad situations just beget further bad situations. And we're going to talk about how the Fed, the Fed would shrink the amount of money supply. So people are not able to circulate money in the way that they normally would. And again, this situation is exacerbated and, and a bad situation becomes much worse. All right? And this would lead to a massive devaluation in stocks all at once. So you're, you're talking about publicly traded companies where on October 28th, they are in good shape, and by Halloween, they are out of business. Uh, many would see their fortunes evaporate that day. All right? I mean, we, we think about stocks going up and stocks going down right? and how that affects the market. Seldom do we think of a complete cratering for businesses all over the country. And that, that's really what we were beginning to see. And it was just going to get much, much worse. The stock market collapsed, again, the start of the Great Depression, but there's a lot more in terms of policy and indecision that leads to, again, a bad situation becoming worse. Okay. So moving on to the next slide. Prosperity is just around the corner. That's something that Herbert Hoover uh, used to say all the time. Prosperity is just around the corner. And, you know, it's a good campaign slogan, uh, but prosperity, not only was it not just around the corner, prosperity was years off, and it, and it would take a guy named Franklin Roosevelt and his New Deal to pick the country up and put people back on their feet. Herbert Hoover, try as he might, was not the man for the job, and it's going to lead to one of our most beloved presidents uh, in, in U.S. history. In a lot of ways... Um, Herbert Hoover can be seen in a similar light to, say, James Buchanan, or, or James Buchanan precedes Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Herbert Hoover precedes Franklin Delano Roosevelt, right? So a lot of times, fortunately for us, it, it does seem that our country seems to find the right man at the right time, right? And, and we've had that situation uh, numerous times, be it George Washington or Abraham Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt uh, busting the trust, and then eventually his cousin uh, helping rebuild our nation. Now, the 1920s uh, were not supposed to end this way. You know, we, we talked about the Roaring Twenties. The Roaring Twenties was a time of great American prosperity. Times were good. So you would hope that good times would continue uh, that wasn't the case, though. You know, in a lot of ways, it's like we were driving 100 miles an hour, uh, not wearing our seatbelts, and uh, we're heading for a cliff. All right. Oh, but wait, it's the middle of the night, the lights are off on the car, and we don't see it coming. I mean, that's really how, how we want to look at this. Um, we, were, we were reckless, all right, and it, and it led to bad situations. Now, this is what Hoover said. Uh, in the 1920s, um, we're going to look at things called Hoovervilles and, and you know, st stuff like that. Um, we are nearer the final triumph over poverty than ever before in the history of any land. We are closer to conquering poverty. We are, we are closer than ever to creating this utopian society. Obviously, it didn't happen. Okay, uh, he just didn't see what what economists were anticipating might happen. Now that triumph never occurred, as I said, it never occurred. Uh, the nation instead slid into the longest economic slump Americans had ever experienced, and of course we know this as the Great Depression. Okay, now the Great Depression is one of those things where the nation is going to be down, and it's not just the nation; it's the world. Right? And in many ways, the Great Depression is going to lay the path for the inevitable Second World War. But understand this, right? And, and, and think about it in our times right now. Think about what we're going through. Think about us sitting here right now, uh, you know, me giving you a lecture, 
uh, via video, right? We are going through difficult times right now. And, and difficult times aren't fun for anyone. They're not. However, the beauty of difficult times is that difficult times give us a chance to become better. It gives us a chance to become stronger as individuals. They're also wonderful learning experiences, right? In many ways, the greatest classroom is all around us right now. How are we reacting to this crisis? In many ways, we can look back to our great-grandparents and what they did to handle the Great Depression and take those lessons and move them forward to today, right? There's always opportunity in difficult times. You know, an individual, um, I'm sure students all over the, the world at some point have uh, cursed his name for inventing calculus, but think about this. During the plague, uh, Sir Isaac Newton right, would practice social distancing, and, and he would actually go to his home out in the countryside. And when he was there, he invented calculus. Right? So take this time right, to focus on yourself. Right? Focus on your studies. Work hard, absolutely. But also be creative. Right? Use your minds in effective ways. It, it, there is a benefit to having this time. Don't just waste that time, right? Who knows? Maybe you'll be the next Isaac Newton. Maybe you will uh, come up with something that changes the world, right? Sometimes very, very difficult times give us great opportunities, right? Think about Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt and his New Deal he, ne he never has an opportunity to become one of our greatest presidents if, if there wasn't such a dire situation. Same with Abraham Lincoln. Same with George Washington. Same, same with our, our numerous wonderful men and women around the country. When faced with difficult situations, it gives us an opportunity to become better individuals, right? to better tackle situations that come uh, for us and, and to us in the future. Okay, so moving on, last slide of the day. Uh, piece of the pie. Now, although the stock market crash was a key cause, and I had mentioned this earlier, it was, it's undeniable. Right? It's like saying, you know, slavery was the cause of the Civil War. Well, it's certainly a huge factor, undoubtedly, but to say such a massive conflict was just over one uh, situation that's a little simplistic right so a as we we move forward and we talk about the Great Depression it, it, it's very easy to say oh the stock market collapse caused the Great Depression sure right uh, for for an introductory lesson that's a good way to look at it but as we go through we're gonna take a look at the other causes it wasn't just one thing all right, so in this lesson, we're, like I said, we're going to learn about those different uh, things that led to the Great Depression. Um, but I hope you guys are well. I miss you very much. All right, I hope you enjoy the videos. Uh, obviously, I wish you were here. Right? That would be a much more enjoyable experience for all of us. But please stay safe. All right, and I look forward to having you guys back soon.